Hello and welcome. I am Meli Anamalai, Product Manager at Oracle, and I will be demonstrating to you how you can go from someone who knows nothing about graphs to using graphs in your applications. So graphs are a different way of looking at your data. Let's look at an example here. You have a bank account table and a bank transactions table. Bank accounts contains account, inf account ID information and bank transactions table contains information on uh, cash transfers between two accounts. So to create a graph from such these tables, you would represent your bank accounts, which are your data entities as vertices and the bank transactions relationships between two accounts as edges. So in other words, you're explicitly representing the relationship between two accounts. That is an account transfer money to another account. And that becomes an edge in the graph. So you have a bank accounts as vertices and bank transactions as edges. So when you explicitly represent edges in your graph, it allows you to run graph queries on your data to identify interesting patterns. For example, you can ask a graph query to see whether there is a cycle in your graph where money was started from one account, was transferred through many intermediate accounts, and then came back to the source account. That could represent money laundering. You could also use graph queries to do path analysis. Like while doing what if analysis in manufacturing, you can model different components, your bill of materials as a graph, and when you're changing the design of one component, you can do path analysis to see other components that are both directly and indirectly connected to this component. These are simple queries that you can specify in a graph query. When you're running graph algorithms, you're analyzing your entire graph. You're looking at how different vertices in the graph are connected to each other. So for example, you would run a page rank algorithm on a graph that would I didn't help identify important vertices. And these are vertices that are connected to other important vertices and so on. So running such a page rank algorithm on your graph helps you identify influencers in a social media network. You can also run clustering algorithms, graph clustering algorithms that allow you to identify vertices in a graph that are more connected to each other than they are to the rest of the graph. So these could be communities in your customer data set, for example, that have certain similar characteristics. This could be, uh, such clusters could be used to identify churn, make product recommendations, and so on. So when using Oracle Graph, you can create query and analyze your graph very easily. You can create a graph from relation tables using the automated modeling tool in autonomous database. And you can query a graph with a SQL-like graph query language, PGQL. So this query language has a select, the from, and the where clauses, and also has a match clause that allows you to specify a graph pattern. And here, this example specifies a graph pattern, which is a three-hop cycle. Then you can analyze your graph using various algorithms like page rank between a centrality. These two algorithms identify importance, whom to follow uh, identifies clusters or communities in your graph and so on. And these algorithms, over 60 of such algorithms are available in Oracle Graph that you can invoke using a simple API call in Python or Java. And the visualization tools help you visualize your graph visualize intermediate results, and so on. So in this demo, I will be looking at this data set, which represents a fictitious uh, movie stream company, where you have a customer table, you have a movie table, or, and then you have a cost sales table that represents which customer uh, rented which movie. So when I create a graph from this table, the customers are naturally vertices, they are data entities, and the movies are naturally vertices as well. They are also data entities. So I have a graph with two different types of vertices, and then I have the relationship between them as a customer rented a movie, and I get that information from the cost sales table, and that becomes an edge in the graph. So in the demo, I'm going to show you how you can model and create a graph from these tables.
and then run the personalized salsa algorithm and the whom to follow algorithms to make movie recommendations to specific customers, customers who are identified at, uh, as being at risk for churning. You'll also see examples that I, I, will, uh, I will run graph queries on this graph and we'll see how we can visualize these results in a notebook and you'll see how you can do all of this very easily and get started very quickly. So with that, let me get started with the demo. So I have here an autonomous database that I have provisioned and I can click on the tools tab and scroll down to Graph Studio here, the Graph Studio card. And then I can log in here using a database user. So once I have authenticated myself uh, here, I will be able to access Graph Studio and have all the tools available for me to create a graph and so on. So let me get started with modeling the graph. I have here tables on the left that I'm going to use to model the graph. And I'm going to use the customer promotions table, which is a subset of the customer table and contains customers that are likely to churn, likely to leave the service. So I want to be sure to make uh, precise movie recommendations for them. And here is information on the movies that they have rented. And here is the movie table. So I have here these three tables, the customer, the rental information, and the movie table. And when I click on next, the modeler gets to work and identifies potential vertex tables and edge tables. And I can see here that it has correctly identified the movie and the customer table as vertex tables and the cash sales table as an edge table. And you can see here the source code for the create property graph statement that has been generated by the modeler. So if everything is satisfactory, I can go ahead and edit some of the, this if I want to, but if everything is satisfactory, I can go ahead and click on next and get ready to create a graph. I have already created this graph, so I'm not going to be creating this again. And instead I'm going to go over to notebooks here and I'm going to open up this notebook where we will see how we can run the personalized salsa algorithm to make recommendations, very precise recommendations of uh, movies. So the salsa algorithm is used uh, to identify relevant websites when you're searching uh, for a web page. So among other things, it looks at things like whether multiple websites are pointing to this particular website and whether these websites that are pointing to this website are pointing to several other websites. So now, in other words, it looks at, um, it identifies by looking at the different connections, how relevant a website is. And you can look up information on the Salsa algorithm. So what we'll be doing here is a personalized Salsa algorithm to find recommendations for a particular customer. First, let's look at this particular graph query, with, which has a simple pattern. Find me all movies connected to C1, customer C1, where first name is Emilio and last name is Welch. So Emilio Welch is a customer I have identified to be at risk for leaving the service. So I just, I'm just starting by running a simple query to show you a graph query. So when I run this graph query, we're going to be querying the graph based on how uh, these, uh, based on the movies that are connected to Emilio. And I can right click on this movie vertices to get more information about these movies. And these are stored as properties for the movie vertices, like the title, the awards this movie has won, the cast, and so on. I can, I can also right click on this vertex to get more information about Emilio Welsh, all the properties associated with him his credit balance, his address, his age, and so on. Information that might be useful for when you're analyzing this particular customer. So next I'm going to show a different graph query here where I'm looking at a slightly, um, like a, a looking at a graph pattern that's a little more complex than the previous one. So I'm looking for all customers C1 and C2 that have watched the same set of movies. So I'm looking for a set of movies that have edges from uh, these two customers, C1 and C2, and I'm identifying what uh, who C1 and C2 are in the where class here. 
So I have Emilio Welsh here, and I'm looking at another customer, Floyd Bryant. So this is um, a query that would return uh, 20 movies because I have a limit of 20. So it's returning to me a few movies that these two folks have liked. Now here I can remove the limit just to get more movies that the two of these, uh, two of uh, uh, the customers, that these customers have watched. So, and I can see here that the two of them have watched several movies and the, the visualization goes actually to multiple pages. So now that I've done that, uh, I want to, but to make recommendations, I really want to look at a cluster of customers. I don't want to just look at one recommendation from one person. I want to look at a cluster of customers, a cluster that Emilio belongs to, to see what movies they have liked and to see whether Emilio would like uh, those movies uh, as well. So another example of a graph query, just to highlight how we can just get simple details also from, from this query. So I'm just selecting some of the properties for Emilio here. And then here, I'm going to uh, start by first uh, getting a handle for this graph in memory. This is, uh, I'm using Python here. And then, then I'm going to use this API to create a subgraph that uh, is uh, useful when you are running the personalized salsa algorithm. And then here I'm selecting a vertex, uh, a vertex object for this customer, for this customer ID that belongs to Emilio. And then here I'm running the personalized salsa algorithm. So you can see here that it takes as arguments a graph and a customer object, and then it, up, it runs through the whole algorithm to identify different properties, or to identify which movies would be appreciated by Emilio. And, it, and how it, it does that, it, it, it identifies a, a rank or a, a metric for movies, and that is added as an additional property here for the, for the movie. So there's a new property now uh, called personalized salsa that contains a metric that determines whether this movie would be of interest to Emilio. So I can run this PGQL query now to use that property and rank 20 movies, the top 20 movies that would potentially be liked by Emilio. So I can then make these movies as recommendations for Emilio. So let me now go back to this notebooks here and open a different notebook, which runs a different algorithm, the home to follow algorithm. So again, I have some sample queries. And if you uh, have looked at the movie stream live lab, this lab is available there. Uh, so now let me go to the movies, uh, the home to follow algorithm here. Once again, I'm selecting a vertex object, and this time I'm looking at the customer, Ricky Rogers. I'm going to say I want to find out uh, all the movies that I should recommend to Rick, Ricky Rogers, and here I'm running Java code. And here I'm running the home to follow algorithm, it takes as arguments the graph and the customer object. And you can see here again that these are just simple API calls for sophisticated algorithms that do a lot of interesting things. So the home to follow algorithm returns uh, two things. It returns a cluster, of uh, a cluster of other customers that Ricky Rogers belongs to. Ricky Rogers is the customer we're looking at in this notebook. And then it also returns a set of movies liked by this customer. So here's a set of customers in the same community or cluster that Ricky Rogers belongs to. And here is a set of movies that they have watched. So I'm now going to make some recommendations for Ricky Rogers. So let me say I start with Captain Marvel. I run this PGQL query to see whether Ricky has watched this movie. Like here I have a pattern here. We connected with the edge with label rented and I want to this movie M where movie is Captain Marvel. So I'm going to see has Ricky Rogers rented this movie? He has not. And I look at someone else in this community, Sang Hoffman, and when I run the same query with Sam Hoffman, I see that Sam Hoffman has rented this movie, in fact, multiple times. So perhaps this is a good movie to recommend for Ricky Rogers because Ricky and Sam belong to the same cluster. 
And here's another example, Toy Story. I once again see here that Ricky Rogers has not watched this movie. And again, I see here that Sang Hoffman has watched this movie and again, multiple times. So probably this is also a good recommendation to make for um, Ricky Rogers. So you can see here how quickly I created a graph. I ran some sample queries, and then I ran this really powerful graph algorithms to, to identify what movies to recommend for a particular customer. So it's really easy to get started with graphs and to use this notebook to do all kinds of interesting things with graphs. I want to wrap up here by sharing a couple more things with you. There are two graph models, the property graph data model and the RDF graph data model. The property graph model is what is used for graph analytics, graph queries, and so on, uh, like I was uh, showing you in the demo. And RDF graph is used more for knowledge graph kind of applications where you're integrating an ontology that captures domain-specific expertise, or uh, RDF graphs also give you a way to connect disparate data sources. And Oracle graph supports both of these models. So just a quick example uh, using RDF graphs. So you have your movie table in your database that has information about the movies, like the cast, the awards, and uh, the data that's produced, and so on. But it doesn't have all information. For example, it doesn't have information on when a movie, uh, when a particular actor was born, or when a director was born. DBpedia has information curated from Wikimedia data that probably has this information. So when you run an RDF graph query and you do that, you first represent your movie data as an RDF graph, and DBpedia already has an RDF graph representation, you can run a Sparkle query, and Sparkle is the standard query language for RDF graphs. You can run a Sparkle query that would query these two data sources and give you the information that you're looking for. Like the, for the birth year, it goes to this DBpedia source and gets that information for you. So that brings me to the end of this session. For more information, you can look at these resources. And thank you very much for watching.